there! This is Emily, and I'm here with a book review for In a Dark Dark Wood over there by Ruth Ware. Yeah, there's where the camera is. Okay, so anyway, this book is a is I almost said it was a horror. I thought it was a horror going into it, but it's actually a mystery, which is okay. It, but anyway, it's about this girl named Nora. Well, she's not really a girl. She's like 26, and she's a crime fiction writer in a crime fiction book, and she's an introvert like most of us writers are. And then she gets, like, she also has, like, some kind of, like, social anxiety, at least as someone with anxiety, that's what I got. And then she, like, gets a person with anxiety's worst nightmare. She gets an invitation to a hen night or a bachelor. I, I can talk. A bachelor, bachelorette party. Anyway, she gets an invite there, um, and it's from an old friend she hasn't talked to in, like, a decade, and so she goes, and she hates it, and by the way, her former best friend's name, who is the future bride, her name is Claire Cavendish? Which honestly only reminded me of Diana Cavendish from Little Witch Academia. So anyway, she goes to this party and you know it's going to end well because it's in a cabin in the middle of the woods. But it's like, well it's not so much a cabin, it's more like a glass house where you can see everything and everything's exposed. And she has a bad feeling about it, but of course she stays and it's kind of like the anxiety dilemma of do I embarrass myself by leaving or do I stay? And so I know there's been a lot of talk about this book and whether or not it's any good. Um, Overall, I enjoyed it. On Goodreads, I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. Overall, it's a solid mi mystery, and it's also very fast-paced. It's not a long book at all. I don't even think it's 300 pages. And overall, probably the best part of it is the atmosphere. Like I mentioned in my summary, is it's surrounded by woods, and it's this glass house where you see everything, and you see like the darkness of the woods, and... The author does a really great job of establishing this kind of creepy vibe, this unsettling vibe. And that's probably my favorite part about the book. I did have a few problems with it. Okay, it, for one, it's kind of predictable. And it's kind of alluded to in the story because our main character, Nora, I don't remember if I said her name, her name is Nora. So she ha she has like... She's a crime fiction writer, and she's in a crime fiction story, and she talks about, well, if I was writing this story, I would have this person be the killer, and it's kind of like this, oh, I would have, like, the less obvious person be the killer, and have this person have the red herring, and it's kind of like, like, I don't want to give it away, but kind of what you expect is, like, the most obvious choice, given, like, some of the dialogue turns out to be the right choice, and... I get that it's more realistic, and in mystery, like, there's a lot of things, like, would this happen in real life, and the whole red herring thing, but at the same time, I feel like those, like, false presumptions make for a really strong narrative, because you're always guessing, and, I mean, sometimes, I know, like, people like to look at fiction and be like, well, that wouldn't happen, that wouldn't happen, but overall, sometimes realism is boring. However, if you're looking for something that's like kind of different from your traditional mystery, you might like this. And like I said, it's very fast paced. And it's the kind of thing like if the story as it was was extended a lot longer and this thing was like 400, 500 pages, I'd be kind of like, hmm, maybe it should have been trims. But overall, it's the perfect length. And another thing I didn't really like about it is that Nora, I didn't hate her character, but she was kind of not that bright. And there's one scene that just drove me crazy. And I know some people have issues with like her staying when she really doesn't want to be there, but I get that she has anxiety problems and all that. But the thing I couldn't really forgive is, okay, there's this scene, it's maybe minor spoiler, but I won't give away who it is, but she's with someone who is obviously bad and that person offers her tea. And so Nora just drinks it, and it tastes weird, and her reaction is, oh, the milk's gone a bit bad, maybe, like, it's soured. And then, like, ten minutes later, she feels, like, woozy, and I'm like, really? Really? You accept the tea, it tastes weird, and you drink it anyway because you're like, oh, it's just the milk. 
And that was when I was like, oh my god, Nora, why? Why? So, yeah, there's that. And also, this isn't really a complaint or a good thing, but I was wondering if anyone else who read this kind of got the vibe that Nora is, so I know she's in the dudes, but she's maybe a little bi because there's this police officer who comes in who's female and she like interrogates Nora when she's in the hospital and Nora over and over and over again describes her as beautiful and it, if it was just one thing I was like I'd be okay it's just the establishing description but she does it more than once always insisting that she's beautiful and I'm just kind of like hmm because there are two characters in here. Well, there's a few, like, like lesbian, gay, and bi characters. Um, Nora's not really stuff like that, but I was just like, huh, I'm curious. And besides that, I don't really have any other thoughts about this book. Like, it was fine. It's a quick read. Um, if you're looking for something to pass the time during summer, um, there are a lot worse things you can read. And so, that's my first book review on this channel. I hope it wasn't painful. Bye.